Hey, this is Kathy from Kathy Cooks For You. Welcome to my kitchen. Today, I have come up with this delicious eggnog rum cake. Now I saw an eggnog recipe for a cake and thought, oh, well that sounds kind of interesting. And then I remembered I had a rum cake recipe that I absolutely love and it's chocked full of pecans. And I was like, well, what if I combine these two recipes and come up with a delicious eggnog and rum cake? So stay tuned. We are going to start by beating our butter. Now I am using an unsalted butter and this is the Plugra name brand, which I really like a lot. Um, and it's much cheaper at Walmart. So you can pick it up at Walmart. We're gonna start by beating this for two minutes. It should be room temperature already. wipe down the sides one more time and then go in another 30 seconds. Definitely lighter. Next step is we are going to add our three cups of sugar gradually and we're going to beat this for five to seven minutes. It's a long time but we need a lot of air in this. Okay I had to switch bowls um, because I was making a mess with that other one. It wasn't high enough. So I have my sugar and my butter blended nicely. So now we're gonna add our six eggs, one at a time, but just until they're blended. You know, we're not trying to um, have a minute in between each egg. So when you see the yellow's gone, you can add another one. So the yellow's already gone. So we're going to add another one. And we're just gonna keep going at this pace until all six are in here. Okay, now it's time to add our flour, salt, and baking soda mixture and our eggnog. And we are gonna alternate these two into this. So we're gonna put a little bit in there. Just mix it in. A little bit of our eggnog. Ooh, yummy. Yummy. Oh, it's such a pretty color, isn't it? A little more flour. Then we're just gonna beat this with our mixer on low for just about a minute, just to get a little more air in it and make sure that any lumps are out. Now we're gonna mix in our vanilla and rum. Let's just stir that until blended. Okay, now we're going to add our three quarters cups of pecans. Now you'll see my pecans are toasted and I put some flour on them. Why did I flour them? Well, pecans have natural oils and um, that, and just the fact of gravity and that they're being in cake, they are gonna sink to the bottom. Flour is twofold. It soaks up some of the, the natural oils and pecans in any nut, and you do this with fruit also. And um, the second thing is, is that it also makes it adhere, the flour, to the flour in here, so to keep it suspended where it's at. So we are gonna add this in. This is optional. So if you taste it right now, it has a faint eggnog, a delicious eggnog flavor. We are also going to be putting some spices in it. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put half of it down with this color, and then we're gonna put our spices in, and we're gonna kind of like marble up that in. And then your cake is gonna look two color, and it's actually gonna have two flavors. So it, it's gonna be a little interesting. So let's get our, make sure you have a greased and floured bunt pan. I'm just going to put some in and we're just going to let, we're going to let that settle for a minute just to make sure it's getting into all those crevices. I can just kind of shake it a little too. Now we're going to take our remainder batter here and I'm going to put in my cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, and one other, oh, allspice. Now we're going to take our knife and do just a little swirly action, kind of you know, blending them a little bit. 
Now we're gonna bake this bad boy in a 350 degree oven for 50 to 55 minutes. All right, it's been 50 minutes. Let's look, let's see if, see how we, it's still jiggling it just a little bit. I think that's gonna need more than five. Okay, this is always the scary part. I let it cool, I went around the edges as much as I could and I let it cool. It is not wanting to come out. Okay. Gotta work it a little more. This one seems a little tougher than some in the past. I might be messing up my crumb, my pretty crumb, but nothing that powdered sugar and a little of my glaze can't fix. When in doubt, powdered sugar and glaze. I have went all the way around. So let's try again. Okay, I'm really bummed. You can see all my juicy, delicious bits stuck, even though I greased and floured my pan. So I'm left with this bald cake. <laughs> we are gonna make it look beautiful anyway. The show must go on. The flavor will taste exactly the same. That's how you know when you have a homemade cake, is because it's not perfect. The store-bought ones are perfect. This is gonna be beautiful, but we have to let it cool first, and then we'll go on with the show. All right, it is time to make the frosting for our ugly cake. It's gonna be fine, guys. It's gonna be fine. I'm gonna start by melting um, a quarter cup of butter. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need it all, because I will be using, we are gonna drizzle some rum over the cake. I'll show you that, but then I'm also gonna use this to flavor my frosting. Um, I wasn't planning on doing that, but because of my debacle with my crust, and I went on the internet and found out the best grease to use when you are flouring a pan is shortening. I don't keep shortening in my house. Um, probably using butter would have been next best, but spraying that oil was like doing nothing at all. And um, I should have known better. You know, I've used that button pen before. I am going to buy some shortening just for that purpose. And I could just, you know, last has an extremely long shelf life. So that being said, let's get to making this frosting. I'm gonna melt my butter. Okay, I just was talking to myself. Um, thought my camera was on, but it was not. Just made a frosting with two tablespoons of melted butter, two cups, of um, powdered sugar and three tablespoons of dark spiced rum. Now we are just sprinkling our cake with rum. I'm using a fork just because it kind of makes droplets. I'm getting it all over, not just the top, but sides too. And you can use more than two tablespoons. I might because if my cake can't be pretty, it can get them drunk, right? The really funny part of my debacle is that this cake is going to people's homes and I've never been to this couple's house before. And you know, they know I've got this cooking channel. They probably think, oh, everything's perfect all the time and I'm gonna take over my ugly cake. Um, you know, I just have to lower my pride and the show must go on. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our frosting on and then we're going to just sift some powdered sugar over it. All right, and I'm just gonna use this because it seems to be real pretty. To, I'm just gonna go over the whole thing. Oh, it's already looking better, huh? Nice how you can turn an ugly cake into something pretty, poor guy. Okay, it is definitely looking better, much prettier. I don't think I need to put any toasted coconut or anything like that. I'm just gonna put a little powdered sugar. And I wanna get it on the plate too, cause it's pretty.
Okay. See how we were able to fix that uh, debacle? It's beautiful. It's pretty now.